Hey gang, welcome to Off the Rack. I am Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Today we're going to talk about Superman whoa, number... Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is not Tiffany. No, that is. This, yes, is, this is me now. This is... Oh, yeah, I see. This it's is... all finally complete. Yep, this is... The Sorceress Supreme? That's right. I can be Sorcerer Supreme. It's okay. It's oh, not, not gender specific? No, it doesn't have to be. Today we're reviewing Superman number 10 from last week from DC Comics, which is written by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason, with art by Mick Gray and Patrick Gleason. I'll give you the summary of what this book is about. It's Super Sons, but the prelude to it. It's John Kent meets Damian Wayne. Uh, worlds collide. You get to see Superman and Batman wax fatherhood a little bit. You get to see uh, some interesting characters. Nobody, which you'll understand if you read the book. And also, uh, you know, tensions rise, uh, passions are expressed, and somebody gets punched in the gut that I've been looking forward to forever. So, let's get into it. Uh, we, of course, review our books based on their art, writing, and story, and then give you recommendations for books that are coming out this week. So, if you want to see the recommendations, uh, hold tight, watch this review, and then at the end, we'll give you those recommendations. But, uh, what'd you guys think of Superman number 10? Ben? This was fun. Right? <laughs> this was really fun. Yes. And only because Robin is being a dick. <laughs> Such a dick. And he's like, he's being Batman squared. Yeah. Like, oh, my dad's like an ornery, crotchety guy every once in a while who's like, ooh, yeah. I'm going to do that twice as bad. Yep. So he really that was up. hilarious. He was a fun character to really dislike. <laughs> yeah, he's a good villain for this book. Ebony? I thought he was a way more fun version of Damian Wayne than we've seen. Mm -hmm. But I also liked him having, um, you know, like a foible, you know, like... Yeah. In in Superboy, if that's what we're gonna is yeah, that okay to call him that? Yes. Like yes. He has someone who is is stronger than he is technically, who actually has powers and ability, whose dad is doing something very similar, you know, and he just has a completely different outlook. Yep. So like for those two to to clash like that, I, I love it. Like I think that's amazing. I think they both have a lot to learn from each other, and mm -hmm. I have a feeling it's exactly what Super Sons will explore. No doubt. Um and I it's just it's kind of cool to see Damian Wayne have a friend. Yes. <laughs> that like, he doesn't know is a friend And yet. that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? Just like with Batman and Superman, over the years we've seen them at odds, we've seen them as friends, you know what I mean? But like, they are friends. Yes. And regardless of if they agree on things or disagree on things, you know, at the end of the day, they, they like each other and they respect each other. And, I, and I'm hoping that that's what we will see come of these two. But we get to see okay. that coming of age. And yeah. like that, that then like learning from each other and like learning from their fathers and learning from their father's mistakes and you know what i mean like i think that's really cool absolutely and, it's and all... there was a cat and there's a cat and one of your favorite panels of all time yeah in recent memory i think that's one of my favorite panels <laughs> for me there are two great moments so one is rendered behind us it's batman versus superman yeah and superboy versus robin and you're like oh this is gonna be great and I knew there was going to be a fight, so I'm happy that it didn't happen. I was just well, wanted to see that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the the moment that cinched it for me was after Superboy and Robin have been tussling in the cave, and both fathers are looking at their disappointment of children <laughs> with this with this beautiful rendered silhouette, yep. where they just know they're in deep. And you're like, yes, I am hooked yep. on this series. There was like a couple of moments like when um, there's, it's a huge like one page splash with um, Superboy or John on like the table. And it's like very Dr. Frankenstein-y. Yes. And like Batman's there. And it's like over the top and ridiculous. And I was like, first I was like, this is kind of weird. Then I was like, if I was a child, this, is, this, how it this is how I would perceive it. And I thought that was really cool that much of this book is drawn from a child's perspective. Yep. Another interesting thing about it is that at one point, uh, Batman takes out the kryptonite batarang yes. when Superman starts getting in his face, mm -hmm. and Damien is surprised. He's like, a kryptonite batarang? Yeah. Cool. Didn't know that existed. And then later in the book, he has it. Uh, we highly recommend you should go out there, pick it up. It came out last week. You can get on digital and physical copies. It's a fantastic series. Super Sons should be fantastic if this issue is any indicator, but of course, can't wait for two weeks from now when Superman number 11 comes out and we see uh, Boot Camp and where that leads us. So now we're gonna get into the recommendation portion of our episode. We're gonna show you titles that are coming out this week and you can go pick them up uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. So take it away. Poof! So the book I'm recommending this week is Solo number two, written by Jerry Dugan, art by Paco Diaz. Uh, Solo was apparently a character that came out in like the 90s, from what I was told. And he's like a mercenary, uh, assassin for hire kind of thing. And uh, I don't know if he's really good at what he does, 
But sometimes that's a really fun read to read someone who's incompetent, bumble along and screw everything up, and still manage to get it done. It's kind of like a Naked Gun movie, in a way, with Leslie Nielsen. So, like, if you like that kind of thing, and I do, I'd recommend picking up Solo Number 2. So, with no Doctor Strange books for me to recommend this week, I'm turning to Image, where a book called Green Valley is going to be having its second issue coming out. The story is by Max Landis, with art by Giuseppe Camoncoli. I think I actually got that correct. Um, I read the first issue um, when it came out last month, and I gotta tell you, it's really cool to see Max Landis writing a fantasy story about knights. Um, it has like a really kind of fun, edgy kind of way that the characters talk, where it's not like all Old English or all like set in that period. It's a lot of fun conversations between these four really cool characters. And actually at the end of that issue, there's a letter from Landis just talking about how excited he was to write the book and how he had this amazing scene in his head. And that's kind of where it all spawned from, but also that none of us could imagine where it was going next. And I got to tell you where it left off. I can't wait to see where it goes next. So I am all on board for this. And I hope uh, if you guys are, let me know in the comments below and we'll go on this adventure together. Obviously I have to recommend Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number one written by Jerry Conway with art by Ryan Stegman. I am a huge fan of this combination. A, I've never seen it before. B, haven't seen Jerry Conway write a married Spider-Man in a long, long time, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And I loved Ryan Stegman's Superior Spider-Man work, so this is a match made in heaven for me. I can't wait to see where this winds up. It's gonna be its own universe, but to be honest, I think that's kind of for the best because it means that they get to do whatever they want, however they want to. They're going to have a lot more freedom, and I want to see what they do with that freedom. So, obviously, I'm going to pick it up, and I can't wait to review it for you guys next week. Hey, <laughs> so, I know Annie Mae Parker has spider powers. Yeah. But how does MJ have spider powers? Oh, she steals the Regent's power-absorbing armor, and she winds up borrowing power from Peter. So, the more power that she uses, the less power Peter has. Hmm. Okay. So there you have it, everybody. That was our recommendations for this week. And, of course, it's a review of Superman number 10 from DC Comics. We'll see you next week with another review. I am Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Hey, take it away. Well, I, got, I gotta go. Oh, you do? Yeah, so see ya. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you have it. I'm not gonna get used to that. No.